Hello, in this video we'll give you an overview of the Eclipse modeling framework, EMF, and I will guide you through the most important features. Uh, what you see in the Eclipse, it might be a bit different depending on the version that you have installed and on the set of plugins that you have, and also on the um, perspective that you start. So I'm starting in the modeling perspective. Um, if you are in another perspective, you may see something a bit different. So um, EMF uh, is a um, framework for uh, creating uh, meta models uh, that are at the basis of domain specific languages. So the idea is to create your own language to model a certain domain. So um, to start, uh, we create a new project uh, and uh, we find modeling. So we will find e core modeling project inside the Eclipse modeling framework type and we go forward. Uh, we need the project name, so um, typically there is a, a pattern to follow and it is the same as naming uh, Eclipse plugins because we are creating uh, basically an Eclipse plugin and the pattern is the one of uh, like a reverse um, URI, uh, so it's, we, we will create now an example um, in which we create a language for defining state machines uh, and we are at um, NTNU and uh, it's a course called TDT4250 so I will call the project like this and now NTNU uh, dot TDT4250 uh, dot SM that is uh, for state machine Then uh, you will be asked some uh, information, the package name, uh, that is the package um, that will implement the model, and also um, namespace parameters. Namespace parameters are two. One is the NS prefix, that is normally something very short, that is used for serialization of models, and an URI, that is for uh, unique uh, I, unique resource identifier uh, to identify uniquely uh, the meta model. He, here you can uh, also leave the default namespace parameters, but I suggest you to uh, write something uh, specific to your model. Uh, so in this case, we can write, for example, ntnu and o slash tdt4250 slash sm. Uh, this does not need to be an actual uh, web uh, address, uh, but something that uh, identifies uh, the resource uniquely. Then here you can just choose design and then click finish. And you will be um, shown this editor uh, in which you can actually model your uh, meta model um, graphically uh, so uh, we can start from here uh, so we can start from classes or meta classes and we should uh, define the concept of concepts of our domain so if we want to model uh, state machines we will have for example uh, the concept of state and we will have for example the concept of transition Remember to save uh, because otherwise uh, changes are not propagated. Um, so I'm zooming it in a bit. Um, this is actually a visualization uh, of the base uh, model, which is this dot e core. Uh, so you, here you will have a new project uh, with some folders and you will have a model folder in which you have three files which is an eCore, IRD and gen model, all with the same name. The main one that contains the information of the meta model is actually the eCore, that is a tree view, something like this, um, while the IRD is just a visualization. So here you find, so here is your package, the root of your meta model, and you will uh, find here the parameters that you have placed in the beginning. So it may be that depending on the version that you have, you don't have this ARD and that the 
project is not a modeling project. So now I'm removing them to, to show you. Uh, you don't need to, de to do that. Uh, I'm just uh, showing you what you might uh, have. And so it may be that you are in this uh, situation and that you don't have the ARD. Then you can just right click here and select uh, on the e -core and select initialize e -core diagram and then uh, it will create the visualization. Uh, you have different types of visualization and you should select entities in a class diagram and then select the package and uh, you are um, you, you will be shown this uh, view and here you can just as it says double click to initialize uh, the diagram uh, so what is with what is in the e -core. so if you do double click here it will show again state and transition um, which are the classes that we had before um, so you might uh, actually ha um, have a modeling project as we were mm, working with before um, and you will see this visualization like this instead of seeing the uh, Java files um, but this um, we can uh, see it later how we can deal with this um, so uh, basically uh, these two views are synchronized the diagram and this one and uh, this is kind of nicer to work with but I suggest you to always check in the tree the e -core visualization because it is the like the basic one and it's the one that is more consistent and while uh, this is nicer I suggest you to work with the tree visualization which is more um, reliable let's say um, so um, we can continue modeling our uh, our domain eh? and we let's say that the state has um, a, a name eh? so we can add um, features uh, which are can be attributes let's say that a state has a name and you can either double click to to edit properties so this is the name of the property and in this case it will be also name uh, and the type so you always need to select a type for your properties and um, in e -core, properties are uh, types are uh, start with an e so we have e string instead of string we have e int instead of int etc e uh, float in this case it's a string uh, and these are mapped to specific java uh, data types but to work um, in the emf uh, framework you should use the emf types then uh, we can select ok uh, and then we have um, this uh, property uh, and you should always also uh, so here you can edit the same properties here you can always uh, remember to set the uh, multiplicity appropriately so here uh, we are working with something similar to a class diagram or to an ER di ER diagram but here the focus is on um, defining very well what are the constraints so that only correct models can be created so here uh, we have that uh, a state has uh, the property name has a lower bound which is zero and upper bound which is one which means that the property is optional but in this case if we want to say for example that a state has always a name we should add lower bound uh, one so that uh, it has uh, always a name um, we can continue uh, adding properties uh, let's say that the transition can have um, also maybe a name um, and uh, we can do this in the tree view also and we can also copy and paste and paste uh, properties uh, so this is something that can uh, speed up things a bit um, 
let's say also that a transition has um, a transition has a, um, a weight uh, or uh, which can be found in some uh, kind of state machine but in this case it is optional and in this case it's an integer Okay, so um, we have created basic uh, uh, classes and attributes, but we um, can also add uh, relations. So we have two kind of properties that we can add to meta classes, one being uh, attributes and one being uh, references. Or um, you can see better in the tree view. Uh, so when we have a meta class. You can add new child and we have e attribute or e reference. E attribute are basically properties that have uh, basic data types as uh, type, while e references are properties that have uh, other meta classes, uh, classes of the meta model as uh, type. So, for example, a transition typically has a starting state and a destination state, and we can call them source and target uh, so let's say that a, the transition has a property named source whose type is in this case transition and the lower bound is one and the upper bound is one and we can also copy this one and say that it has a, a target transition uh, so this represent the state from which the transition goes uh, to the state from which the uh, to which the transition goes and sorry this sh it should be the type should be state of course not transition so if we go back to our diagram we see that now we have created two relations between transition and uh, uh, Um, transi um, references uh, can be containment or not and uh, this is a very important um, uh, property uh, so uh, references can be either containment uh, references or normal references um, equal models are uh, so instances of meta models are structured as uh, trees so we have the objects need always to be either inside a resource inside the file or inside another object so actually we need to organize our objects in a containment uh, hierarchy yeah, so we need that an object is always contained into something so actually if we create uh, instances from this model uh, we are not able to actually create our state machine because we will not be able to put uh, in the same model states and transitions so we can uh, create instances of our meta of our meta classes uh, by um, right clicking for example on a state and selecting create dynamic instance in this case, this is a way to test our meta model and we can see what can we do with that. So we can create, for example, the instance of, uh, we can try to model a traffic light yeah? and um, we have the state, we can call it state red, for example. So we have now a, an instance of a state and we see that it has a name because we have defined that it has a name. Uh, we can call it uh, red uh, but we cannot do much more because we don't have a, a way to create other elements so yes we can create for example another model in which we create a transition but we cannot um, we cannot do much with that uh, so uh, we can add some properties but then we don't have um, we can uh, 
call becomes green and then the weight maybe is one and uh, we can try to put the source and target but um, we don't have uh, other objects uh, so um, we could actually load other resources uh, so we can find uh, models in the same workspace uh, and we can find the state so now we have references the state and we can say okay the source is the red state but it is not very convenient uh, so we can uh, create a, a model for each object basically and linking them uh, and if you see in the serialization so these xmi files are text files uh, uh, or xml files so we can open them and if you open the transition uh, with the text uh, editor you will see that it references the xmi file of the state uh, etc but it's not very convenient so what we normally do is to have uh, a meta class that represents the root of our models in this case which is the main concept that we are trying to model and in this case it's the state machine itself and then we can say uh, we can also say that it has a name maybe and maybe also a description we can say that it has a description but it's not mandatory And this uh, state machine uh, contains states and contains transitions. So it is actually the container uh, of our states and transitions so that we, if we create an instance of a state machine, then we can put states and transition inside. And let's say that a state machine has at least maybe two states and one transition. It is uh, our decision uh, we could say also that a state machine for us it can be just something with just one state and no transitions but in this case uh, let's do like that uh, so we can now uh, actually uh, create an instance of the state machine create dynamic instance and we call it traffic light I remove those that I was creating before we don't need them just not to create confusion so now we have a state machine here and we can create uh, children uh, of elements inside because we have those two composition relations uh, so we can here create state because we have this relation that is a composition a containment and we can create two states that is red maybe three states red uh, yellow or orange and green and then we can create transitions uh, so let's call it becomes uh, green green that goes from uh, red to green okay so if we open it with a text file again and now we see that uh, we have the three states we have the transition that references the two states and so this means that is the source is the, the state zero which is red and the target is state two which is green but uh, it's not very important but just to understand what we are uh, looking at okay so uh, we are able to create uh, models based on um, on what we define in the meta model and we can also validate our uh, model uh, so in this case we have some problem and it is because we don't have uh, the name of a state machine so we have defined that the name is mandatory and uh, we have multiplicity one at least one 
but we have not specified it and the validation uh, it says yeah you are missing something so now the validation should say that is successful and then we can also write a description for example this is an example uh, instance of the state machine meta model representing a traffic light um, you would have also a validation problem if you remove this for example a transition so it says that feature transition of state machine with zero values must have at least one value and this is also a constraint that we have said here we need at least one transition uh, so now uh, we can say again validation and now it's successful we can do the same also on the meta model uh, so we can say we can check if our model is correct with respect to ecore itself uh, and that would not be for example if i have a class um, if i have a, cl a class without the name for example if I validate it says okay the class uh, it doesn't have a name it's not uh, right or a property without a type so you should always validate your meta model uh, to be sure that it's uh, it respects the ecore um, the ecore uh, meta model itself uh, there are there is some um, uh, um, practices in naming things so meta classes should start with uppercase and attributes sh should start with lowercase uh, this is because then they are uh, transfor transformed into java so they should be basically valid java identifiers um, uh, okay so for properties you can also add um, um, basically uh, you can also add the initial value uh, so for example for this weight um, we have the default value we can add one uh, and so for example we will have that in our model for the transition uh, if uh, we have already this transition but if we add the new transition the default value is one for the weight um okay so then uh, we uh, once we have our meta model defined then we can go to the gen model or gen model and uh this is what it will be used to actually generate uh, code for the model um you can right click here and select generate model code and it will create some code now if you are in the modeling view modeling perspective uh, you may see this visualization here which is not very nice uh, so i suggest you to switch to either plugin development or to java perspectives so if you switch to the java perspectives um, to the java perspective and not to the plugin you will see the generated code so uh, from the ecore it will be generated three packages uh, one that contain um, basically interfaces for each meta class in the in the meta model so we have here three interfaces state state machine and transition uh, all of them extend e object which is the basic uh, kind of root of um, all the ecore objects uh, a bit like object for java and uh, so all the e core objects uh, extend e object and then in imp you will have an implementation of each uh, class uh, with all the features and methods to access uh, the features uh, so you will have for example uh, set name get name uh, for the state machine implementation you will have um, get state uh, get transition so for 
properties that have a multiplicity maximum one, you will have getters and setters. For properties that have multiplicity maximum multiplicity greater greater than one, you will have only a getter that returns a list, e list, and then you can add or remove elements there. Um, then you will have also a factory and a package and the factory is what it is used to create uh, instances uh, with for example here create state create transition and create state machine so this is the pattern of the generated code uh, and uh, um, the idea is that you create your language uh, your dsl and then you get for free uh, automatically classes java classes that implement your language so you uh, can kind of um, have uh, models that are that can be uh, processed by the computer and that can be uh, alive in a certain sense um, as you might have seen uh, you have other two options here which is generate edit and generate editor code um, so if we click them, uh, then other two projects will be generated in the workspace, which is the edit and editor uh, plugins. And these are again generated from your model and they implement an editor um, for your uh, models. Uh, th this can be customized, uh, um, but I will not show you here. Uh, but they uh, are plugins uh, that implement editors so um, you can uh, as i was showing before you can open you can create uh, dynamic instances of your model uh, like the traffic light before and if you um, if you close it and you don't know how to open it you can open it always with this sample reflective core model editor uh, so you will also always be able to open them but this editor and I will show you in a moment it doesn't support all uh, the features of your model in particular or it may not support all the features of your model in particular it will not use the generated code so it, it provides a sample a basic implementation which is reflective so it uses reflection and not the code uh here in this package so if you for some reason modify this code or customize this code then it will not be taken into account here and we will see now an example um so to have like the fully um uh, in a full implementation of your meta model running uh, you need to run a second instance of eclipse in which this plugins are installed and you can do that by either clicking here and selecting run as Eclipse application or also right clicking on the project and selecting Eclipse uh, run as Eclipse application and you will run a second instance of Eclipse with your plugins uh, installed it may take a bit this uh, is not an error it's normal uh, it's some uh, error of the logging um, for Java but it's not uh, a problem so uh, now uh, in this second instance if you go to about Eclipse installation details you will see that our uh, plugins are installed uh, so these are the plugins uh, that we are working with in the other uh, workspace which is the development development workspace so here uh, you have an empty um, an empty workspace and you need to create a, a project you can create a general project an empty project and uh, call it for example no empty a new tdt4250 sm examples and click finish and then here you can create new other and then by 
uh, right in the name of your uh, meta model you will find the wizard for your uh, model so you can select next uh, and then it will create a file with an extension sm which is the one that you have given in the beginning and um, you can call it for example again traffic light or we can call it this one uh, coffee machine you will uh, be asked a model object which is the root again of your uh, model and uh, so as I mentioned it must always be a tree so we select the state machine and you will be again with the state machine and you can create states and transitions you can create two states which is uh, so here uh, you may not find the property views and you can simply show property views view or window show view and then you find uh, properties which is the same we can um, state off and state uh, blue wing for example and then we created a transition which is blue espresso and the source is the state off and the target is a state brewing okay so this is uh, our uh, state machine we see again and uh, that it has been created and that there are some references to the namespace uh, so that it can the framework can identify that this is a model that refers to this to this meta model so it it is a, a kind of a specification of where to find the meta model that can read this model when you run uh, a second instance like this then uh, it will be basically um, the workspace would be will be created um, normally um, and now I have already the, uh, my configuration but normally it will be created in the same uh, workspace in the same uh, on the side of the main workspace uh, with something called runtime uh, something but you can configure this in the run configurations so here uh, in the if you select run configurations in the Eclipse application you can f the configure the name of the second workspace and so I called it workspace runtime and that's why it has created here the folder workspace runtime with inside our other project we can also do other things in our meta model one of them is to have uh, inheritance so we can for example create a meta class that is called final state because we um, we still ha need uh, a way to define which are uh, the final state and the initial states of our state machine models and we can add a relation that is a super type uh, and it means the same as in object-oriented uh, programming so a final state is uh, to all effects a state and uh, so it's a particular kind of state and I could also say that state is abstract and uh, so there is also this concept and um, in that case uh, I could not use the state concept explicitly but only its child children uh, like in object-oriented uh, programming so if I would uh, open again this traffic light then I have uh, problems uh, because it says the class state is not found or is abstract uh, so uh, I cannot have a class state in this case because I modeled, uh, I changed the meta model and it's uh, now abstract. So if I would create also another state machine as an example, then you see that I only can only create final states and not states anymore. And this is not what we want, of course, but uh, it depends on what you want to model. So let's 
put it again as a normal uh, class uh, and we say that this is uh, if this is a final state uh, so a state machine can contain uh, final states and let's say that can contain uh, also initial states it's not probably the best way to model them uh, but it is it is it is a way uh, so let's say that we have this um, and if we again uh, generate uh, the code uh, we can we will see that we have more classes uh, etc um, besides uh, um, and we will see for example that the final state uh, extends the state so it is actually inheritance another important concept is uh, that of um, uh, opposite relations so uh, we in some cases we may have uh, relations that are opposite so these are two relations that are synchronized somehow and an example is uh, the one between uh, state and transition so if a transition has a uh, source and target a certain uh, states then the state has um, an outgoing and incoming uh, transition that is uh, the corresponding ones uh, so we can um, create uh, and and these transition and these references are kept synchronized so if now in the state i create two transitions uh, through mm, two references that are uh, named outgoing and incoming of type transition we can set them as opposite uh, so the outgoing would be uh, the source and the incoming would be the target so if a state is an inner relation with a certain transition in the outgoing relation meaning that that transition is outgoing from that state then the same transition is in the relation um, source with that state a and the same for incoming and target so if a certain transition is incoming in a certain state uh, then that same transition has as a target that state um, and the nice thing in ecore is that this is kept synchronized so uh, in the models uh, you don't need to uh, to set um, both uh, because this will be uh, they will be um, kept synchronized uh, by the framework so if we open again this traffic light and now we can open because we don't have the problem of the abstract state again uh, we have the transition becomes green um, and then uh, we see that this transition goes from red to green so it it is outgoing from red and incoming into green and we see that uh, we have this automatically set in the property of the state uh, red and in the state green uh, and if we change that then uh, this would be uh, synchronized uh, so it is now uh, removed from green but it is in yellow personally I'm not particularly a fan of these um, opposite transitions um, but uh, they can be useful sometimes okay I don't know why uh, they had disappeared but uh, sometimes closing and reopening editors may help 
So now you see that uh, these are shown as bidirectional uh, relations, but basically they are effectively two relations that are kept synchronized. Uh, so a transition is in relation with exactly one state from target and one state as a source, and the state can be in relation with zero or one incoming or zero and one outgoing, but actually a state can be in relation with zero to any number of incoming and outgoing transitions, so we should uh, update this. Uh, otherwise you have that one state can only have one incoming transition. It may be like that, but uh, I think in the general case it's not. So to specify that is uh, the asterisk, the any, it's mm, we write minus one in the model. Um, we should always remember to generate the uh, code again, uh, so we generate everything again. Uh, every time we change the model, we should remember of generating the code. Uh, if you change the names of properties, then sometimes you may have a compilation error because you have old code that is not uh, current anymore, and maybe you should uh, you need to remove it. This sometimes may happen. Another important um, thing that we can add to ECORM uh, metamodels are derived features. And uh, this is important because we want to keep uh, consistency, so we avoid to uh, have the same information stored multiple times in the model, uh, which may cause inconsistency. So in, in, instead of replicating this information in multiple places, which can be a problem for code generation, because if we have inconsistencies in different part, part of the model, then the generators can also uh, create inconsistent code, inconsistent uh, artifacts. So uh, at the same time, in many cases, it may be useful to have the same information organized differently. Uh, so we will want to do that with derived features. So we keep the source of information in only one place and then we uh, generate other information or we derive other information as needed. For example, in this case, we want to have uh, a property of the state machine, which is the initial state. And we create it as a reference to uh, state and it's exactly one. Uh, this is also a way to say that we want to have uh, at least one, um, uh, in, uh, we need to have the initial state, so we need to have at least one initial state, and we cannot say this otherwise, because the initial state is just a type of state, so we could as well have two final states or two normal states and no, uh, not uh, any initial state. So we set the initial state property. It is um, of type state. Uh, okay. And um, we can set say that is derived. This is shown in the diagram as a blue uh, arrow um, or blue property. And we should also, when it is uh, set as derived, we should also say that is transient, volatile, and not changeable. So this is some properties that go together. So when a property is derived, that then it cannot be changed, and also is volatile and transient. Volatile and transient means mean uh, affect the code that is generated. So volatile mean that um, the uh, the property is not stored in, uh, it's not um, stored in a property, so no field will be generated for this feature, no property in the class will be generated for this feature, and transient means that it will not be serialized to XMI. So you can change these properties and see how they are reflected in the class, but normally uh, uh, to have it properly, if something is derived, it should be transient, uh, volatile, and not changeable. 
we can also set another derived property which is for example the number of states uh, number of states which is in this case an integer and it's also uh, and it's also derived derived and now derived uh, transient volatile not changeable Uh, there is some problem with that okay no uh, this this editor as I mentioned sometimes can be a bit misleading so uh, it's always better if you um, if you validate with the ecore model There is a problem there may not be two features named state okay so there was actually a problem um, so this one uh, because basically what happened is in the diagram uh, the property was named uh, automatically state from the relation uh, it is a relation to the class state so it was named state but we have already this state so we should call it initial state And this was the why it was red so if we validate again now it's completed successfully and it's okay we can generate the code again so how can we derive this feature in practice so if we go to the state machine uh, implementation the generated code then um, we see that we have some methods that is um, get initial state and that is this basic get initial state um, that is not implemented so it says implement this method to return the initial state uh, reference um, So here we should implement our uh, derived feature, uh, which um, in this case we can implement it by, and then it says uh, remove generated or mark it as generated not. Uh, so here the generated code will be uh, overwritten. So to be sure that this does not happen, we should add not or actually any other text. Uh, but if we write generated not, then the code will not be overwritten. So we need to return a state that is the uh, initial state of our state machine. And um, so let's say that we have, we start with return, with defining it as null, we return initial. So this is our basic, uh, code uh, and in between we should write our logic um, let's say that we go through uh, the list of state and we return the first one that is uh, an initial state uh, so we can uh, write for each state s in uh, get states uh, so here we are in the state machine so we can as well write this get state or get state and uh, so we are in the context of the state machine um, and uh, we can say that if s instance of um, initial state then s uh, then initial it's s and then we stop uh, it's not maybe the best implementation again uh, but uh, it's just to give an idea of uh, how it could work and also we have this get number of states and um, um, that we should also implement 
and this we can just return the get state uh, sides uh, as um, uh, we need to return a big integer so probably we can uh, do something like this okay so now we have implemented our um, derived features and as I was mentioning uh, we um, we cannot see those from the from here uh, so we see that initial state and number of states are not uh, they don't have a value because this code is not actually executed here so um, this will only work in this uh, second instance of Eclipse uh, because it is when the code gets actually loaded so if we now um, run it uh, in the second instance of Eclipse we should see that uh, these derived features actually uh, should work uh, yeah the number of states uh, work uh, the initial state does not uh, but it's simply because we don't have uh, any initial state here we only have normal states so if we validate again probably we have an error in fact because we don't have an initial state uh, so and we don't have any initial state so we ju can just um, maybe add an initial state uh, we can call it um, power off power disconnected maybe just to see that it's different uh, and this should now be the initial state in fact uh, so it is uh, cor correctly calculated as the number of states also uh, and if we add another initial state um, example uh, then it should this the initial state is still power disconnected so it's also a way uh, to uh, uh, solve the problem that you can have mu multiple initial states with the model that has been defined and if I remove this one uh, then now the example is the initial state uh, so uh, derived features are actually uh, working uh, as expected um, related to derived features we can also have constraints in any core meta model um, and constraints are useful to uh, add some um, uh, other constraints that uh, we cannot uh, exactly specify with um with uh, uh with the meta model itself um for example we could say that um we want that the initial state doesn't have uh incoming transitions um this is maybe not uh really uh something that we always want in a state machine but it is just to give an example um eh? so we can add constraints um, the way to add constraints it's a bit uh, unusual let's say um, so we add it by adding an annotation an e annotation and in particularly in particular an e core e annotation we add it on the object for which the constraint should apply uh, so in this case it's the state machine and we can uh, simply add the name of the constraint so we should uh, we can add for example uh, initial initial state should not have incoming transitions and we can also add other constraints eh? I'm not uh, doing that but this is a list and eh? so we can add other constraints and we can also for example add a constraint of um, the name of the state and uh, that um, 
it should be uh, I don't know state name should be state name should should be shorter than 10 for some reason then we have defined these uh, that that these constraint uh, constraints exist and then uh, we need to see how we implement them again so we generate the code and in this case uh, they are implemented in a validator so uh, sm validator is generated where sm is a state machine and then we will find uh, our constraints so uh, for example validate state state name should be shorter than 10 um, then here uh, we have again another method to implement uh, we say that is generated not and here we have some logic for what to do where the constraint is violated this is kind of basic um, ecore code we should not change that or at least not now but the idea is that we should change uh, how this false is calculated so we simply has have uh, we can define a boolean that is valid and we say that is true uh, for the basic uh, for the basic case and we say if um, if uh, invalid so uh, sorry if or if not valid huh? this depends a bit on um, how how we implement it but uh, the idea is that here we return false so it's not valid and here we return true and in this case uh, it's simply that the state so we are in the context of state we added our constraints on state so uh, we get the state here and then we simply say that uh, if state state dot uh, name dot uh, uh, length uh, greater than greater or equal to 10 then valid valid is false um, or also uh, if um, and this we do this check if state get name is different then it's not null otherwise we get an error because if it is null it is less than than 10. anyway we can implement it as we want uh, but this is the idea so we find the condition for the constraints and then the same uh, for the initial state uh, so um, validate state machine initial state should not have incoming transitions again uh, boolean valid is true if not valid valid then do something and uh, when it's not um it's not valid uh, if uh, state state machine uh, get initial state dot um, get incoming size uh, is greater than zero then valid is false again we need to say generated not um, and this is the implementation of our constraint so again uh, we can try it in the second instance of eclipse because 
it is the the way to to verify it we cannot do it in this same um, uh, workspace uh, if we validate it here uh, we have some problems for example that the name the state name should be shorter than 10 is violated on power disconnected because it's uh, greater than 10 and um, okay we have a source and target of brew express so that they are not set so let's say that off and brewing but also we had another problem that is name of state machine right espresso machine um but initial state uh, okay now we should be okay for the names and the initial state power off doesn't have incoming transitions so it's it's okay uh, but we can add, try to add one um, so let's call it uh power outage something like that from brewing to power off and then in this case we should have a validation problem because initial state should not have incoming transition it's violated because our initial state now has an incoming uh, transition which is the power outage which has as a target power off and so it has as incoming power outage this concludes the first video on the eclipse modeling framework in which we went through the main features for creating meta models with ecore and then uh, instances based on them uh, we have seen uh, what can we do with ecore and how uh, we can uh, generate code for uh, the model itself and for the editors and how to run the editor in the second instance of Eclipse. Um, in the next uh, video I will show you how we can uh, actually make use of the code that has been generated by the framework and, uh, and also of the um, extensions that we have added for derived features and constraints and how we can use this code, these classes to read uh, models in XMI or write models uh, in XMI, XMI and uh, manipulate them and test them.